I can still remember the day my feet touched the American soil for the first time. It was a cold December night in New York City when my two siblings and I walked out of the plane with three bright yellow raincoats, stepped down into the tarmac. In my heart, I was excited to see my mom and dad that I had not seen for five years. But more than that, I was excited about something else. The first thing I did when I came down the tarmac, I looked down, I looked around. I was looking for nuggets of gold. Back home in Haiti, I was told that America is a rich country. So rich, it is littered with gold that nobody picks up. So I decided when I came here, I would pick them up and I too would be rich. You can guess what happened. No gold. The only thing was Mother Nature's frigid wind that slapped me upside the head and said, Welcome to America. Get a grip. <laughs> it was a Wednesday. And as some of you who are immigrants know it well, the parents who came here before worked very hard. My mom was a nurse midwife at Kings County Hospital. She worked 16 hours a day. My dad was a school teacher. I was the oldest of the three, barely, not even close to being a teenager. I was in charge. So we got here on a Wednesday. Monday, I had to be in school. Didn't speak a word of English, so I smiled a lot. <laughs> One day, after recess, something interesting happened. One of my friends in grade school looked at me and go, you stinky. Problem is, I don't speak the language. I have no idea what stinky means. So I smiled. <laughs> then I found my cousin who spoke the language. I said, hey, Gene, they're calling me stinky. So he looks at me, right? He goes, stinky, huh? I said, yeah, they call me stinky. What does stinky mean? He said, eh, don't worry about it. It's a compliment. <laughs> Next time somebody call you stinky, say thank you. And you guys, you know what happened in grade school, right? The name stuck. So everywhere I go, people, hey, Stinky, and what do I do? Thank you! <laughs> Until one day, the French teacher caught up with me, and she explained to me what Stinky meant. Can you imagine my devastation in this new country whose language I did not understand, and people call me Stinky? That day, I had what is called an attitude. I became a difficult person, and that lasted for over 20 years. I don't know about you, but I've met a lot of difficult people in my life. You know what I'm saying? Do you believe that even Christians can be difficult? Uh-huh. Do you believe that SDAs can be difficult? Do you believe people who come to Miami Temple can be difficult? Mm -hmm. No, not here, of course not. Forgot my clicker here. When Lou asked me to speak, I'm going, cool. It's nominating committee season. It's a good time to talk about difficult people. You know why? Very soon, we're going to be installing new officers for two years. Some of them will be very easy to work with. Some of them are going to be difficult. So I thought today I would talk to you a little bit how to handle difficult people. You may have heard this. I'm sure you have. Life is difficult. And there's something else that goes with that you don't hear often. People can be difficult. It doesn't matter who you are, where you were raised, whether you were born in Haiti like I was or in America, you have your difficult moments. And today I want to share with you a little bit how to get along over the next two years with the officers, with the members, what happened when you clash and you have a hard time getting along. What do you do? 
I have a news for you. Do you realize that Jesus had to deal with difficult people? You know that, right? I'm not simply talking about the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Those were the easy ones. You know where the hard ones were? The disciples. The disciples were difficult to deal with. Normally, in any environment, you have what is called social relationships where we have to interact. Like a temple, I have to be nice to you and you to me most of the time, unless I'm having a bad day. You know, when we come to church on Sabbath, we put on our Sabbath clothes and our Sabbath face. And then we meet each other in the week when we are regular. And we go, oh my gosh. Some of us don't even wait for the week to be difficult. We're difficult right here at church on Sabbath. Can you believe what she wore to church today? Hmm. Can you believe he said that? What do you mean I'm not in charge anymore? What do you mean I didn't get reelected to my last position? Christians can be difficult. In any environment where you have people, you are going to have four types of people. We call them social types that interact with each other and yet are different. We were created like that. I believe God created us with many facets to our personality. Sin has an enum. Today I want to two views. The view where God created you as a being that is multi-dimensional and how sin has really messed it up. So basically, if we could get the PowerPoint up, we have four types. And those four types, if you'll click it, since my clicker doesn't want to work. Uh, here we are. At the top, you have what is called a socializer. Then you have the executive, then you have the lovable, then you have the factual. These are the four types of people we have at Miami Temple. These are the four types of people we have everywhere. Jesus had all four among the disciples, and I'm going to walk you through them one by one. First, we're going to talk about the socializer. If you'll click it for me, my clicker refused to work. First, the socializer. The socializer is an interesting person, okay? They have strengths, and you can read the strengths here. Socially skilled, outgoing, risk taker, confident. Bottom line, your socializer is your big mouth. Stop pointing at me. They can't stop talking. Blah, 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 blah. By the way, when they talk, it does not mean it's making sense. <laughs> Just talking. What we do is socialize. These are the people who like a lot of attention. They want the lights on them. It's all about me, 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 me. Of course, I exaggerate to make the point. Okay? There's no such thing as a perfect socializer. And as I continue with the word, I'll show you how we are a combination of all four, but we have one that's dominant. For example, in this church, your socializers are those who always have an opinion. You know what I'm saying? They're always talking. They always have something to say. These are our people. On the other side, the limitations of your socializer, if you'll put the next side for me, please, is under pressure, they can be pushy, impatient, manipulative, and reactive. So here is that person who's happy-go-lucky, who's the center of attention, but when they don't get their way, you know what happens? They push, they shove, they kick, and they react. They react based on their emotion. As you know, we have the left brain kind of people. When you're functioning on the left side of the brain, you're very logical. But when you function the right side of the brain, nothing makes sense. Please, thank you. You're so happy. Okay, does this work better? 
Oh yeah, thank you. So here's the socializer. You got them straight. They are the happy go lucky people. The second type you have in every group is called, clip please, the executive. Let's put up the strength of the executive. Hit it again, please. Very direct, practical, goal oriented, ambitious. It's very, you know why we call them executive? They like to get things executed. And if you're not careful, they will execute you. <laughs> the executive type is a very direct person. You do not have to guess what they're thinking. Why? They'll tell you. Okay? They are very direct. And by the way, they will hurt your feelings. You know why? It's not personal. It's business. Things are supposed to be done a certain way. And when the executive notices it's not being done, you are the problem, they're gonna point at you. And then they call you names. You know what I'm saying? Very, oh, by the way, if the executive wants your opinion, they will give it to you. <laughs> okay, you got the picture, right? Very direct, in your face, loud, can be abrasive. Here you go. Now let's talk about limitations of the executive. If you'll put them up for me, please. Limitation, rigid, critical, dogmatic, narcissist. In other words, when the executive, that executor, doesn't get their way, they become a law unto themselves. They will tell you, this is the way it should be done. Okay? This is the way we've always done it. I've always been so and so at Miami Temple. How come the nominating committee did not renominate me? After all, I own this position. They won't verbalize it. You know what I'm saying? They won't verbalize it, but that's the inner conversation that's going on in the mind of the executive because they're there to direct traffic. The third type of person we have in every church, in every setting, is called, if you'll flip it for me, the lovable. Now, folks. Everybody loves a fun lovable. You know why? Team oriented, devoted, accessible, peacemaker. If the lovable had their way, every Sabbath morning would begin with a group hug. Oh, I love you. Don't you love me? Isn't this a beautiful church? We get along so well. Isn't Pastor Lou wonderful? Oh, we have such a great place. You got the picture, right? The lovable. They are the sweet, kind people. They are the people who are always wanting to give you food. They want to feed you because they want to take care of you. They are the sweet, kind people you need. They are the glue that hold things together. They are the peacemakers. When the socializer and the executive are fighting, guess who jumps in the middle to bring peace? The lovable. Okay. Can we all get along? We are members of the same church. Limitations, too other-oriented, indecisive, emotional stuffer and sensitive, emotional powder keg. Now listen to me carefully. This lovable has the profile of a serial killer. Do you know why? Because they stuff everything. When you hurt their feelings, they say, it's okay, I'm okay. It's all right. Inside, they were ready to kill somebody, but because they have a need to be loved, a need to be liked, a need to keep community, they will not verbalize what they're thinking, so they stuff their emotion until they blow. You, you get my picture? So far we have the socializer, happy-go-lucky, <laughs> Everybody's happy. If the executive, execute, keep place in order. Ever lovable, oh, let's get along, let's hug. And the last one, the factual. Strength, exacting, meticulous and thorough, reserve, risk avoider. Here's the deal with the factual. There are procedures and rules. We follow them. We don't change them. We don't take risks. This is the way things have always been done. 
This is the way it will be done for eternity. These are the people who make great treasurers because they follow the rules and the regulation. <laughs> IT types. You get it? Limitations of the factual. Perfectionist. Shy. Passive. Territorial. One thing you need to remember about this person, it is not about you. If you walk by them and you say in your happy Sabbath voice, Happy Sabbath! And they ignore you. It is not about you. Okay? They tolerate you. They don't like you. <laughs> they are quiet. They are reserved. And they live in their world. If you want to keep them happy, stay away from them. When they want you, you'll be invited in. But don't hold your breath. Okay, so you got the picture, right? So we have four types of people running around Miami Temple trying to get along. Do you think we might have difficult relationships? Of course. Are you going to try to, here's the socializer, church board is happening, and Pastor Lou says, you know, we need to do something new. And the socializer put their hands up. Pastor Lou, we can do this. We call it mouth diarrhea. You know the type, right? Ideas galore. Question to the class, if you heard me directly. Is this the person you want to give that project to work on? No. Because the socializer is a dreamer. They dream. They have great ideas. They live outside the box. But you want to give that project to the executive. Because they are the one who's going to keep it on track. Because the minute after the socializer went... You ask them 10 minutes later, what did you just say? They go, uh, what? <laughs> did I say something? They're on to the next idea. Very interesting concept. Jesus, for example, had Peter, the socializer. Remember Peter? The socializer. He's the one who got out of the boat, had the nerve to ask Jesus to get out, and we got out walking on water, he had to show off. That's a socializer. He's the same one who said to Jesus, hey, you're not going to die. And Jesus had to call him Satan. He's the same one who said, wherever you go, I'll be there. Socializer. Okay? He even went to say to Jesus, I will die for you. Guess who was the executive? James. The son of thunder, James and John. But James was the older brother. The Bible even calls him James the elder. Can you, can you see the executor in him? They to call fire, remember, in Mark, on a city just because they didn't receive him. Burn it down, Jesus. <laughs> Execute them. Guess who John was? The lovable. He was the one. You know, do you realize in the book of John alone, the word love is mentioned 34 times? Can you tell John was a lovable? He was a sweet, kind brother of the Zebedee brothers. His writing is all about love, about getting along. Now, you're probably guessing, who could the F be in Jesus' disciple? I picked two. Judas and Matthew. Matthew the tax collector, Judas the money man. These guys really did not have much of a personality. Because they don't need one. They just need to count the money. Remember Judas was the one when Mary came with that perfume? What did Judas say about the perfume? We could have sold it and made some money and fed the poor. Do you think he really meant to fed the poor? No. Not really. So you can see that even among Jesus' disciples, you had difficult people and you have the four. So let me ask you this then. It is very important that you learn to get along with them. To do that first, you have to understand they all have basic needs. If you'll flip the chart for me again, let's talk about the basic needs of each. First, the S. 
the need for recognition. Your socializer needs to be recognized. If you're married to a socializer, if you're related to the socializer, you need to compliment them day and night. Do you hear me? They need it. They live for it. It's never enough. Got it? Because they live for recognition. And whenever a socializer gets in trouble, a little recognition will go a long way. And they become difficult when they don't get enough recognition. Okay? Peter. Peter, remember? The next one. The E, the need to be in control, okay? The, need, the E needs to be in control, the executive. Give him something to do. If you're married to one, let him feel like a boss. Let her feel like the boss, even though you know they're not. You know what I'm saying? It's the feeling. Because the E needs to feel in control. When they feel that control is slipping away from them, they become difficult. And they will do whatever they can to get the control back. Now, let's get to the sensitive one, the L. The L has a need to belong. The other way, guys. Need to belong. Now, I need to spend some time with the L because you'd be surprised that more churches have issues with the L than any other. Because this is the quiet, sweet person that everybody loves. They are always serving, they are always the first to volunteer, and usually they are ignored. Because they're always there. Until one day, they blow up. And somebody says, is this so and so? I can't believe it. So our need as a church, we need to constantly affirm the L. When they do something, notice. Verbalize that you notice. And it doesn't hurt to give them a hug, a touch, every once in a while. When an L doesn't feel like they belong, they become a difficult people, person, and they become a ticking time bomb. The next one, the F. The F has a need to be right, okay? Because the F is the perfectionists. They have to be right. They must feel like you're following procedures. They tend to be organized. Everything is planned. If you go on vacation on F, have you ever been on a vacation on F? Even the bathroom breaks are planned. You know what I'm saying? The worst thing you can do is to tell the F at the last minute, I have this great idea. Doesn't work. You have to tell them, I've been thinking, what do you think? And plan it together with them. You don't come up with a plan and submit to the F. No, you don't. You make them part of the process from the get-go because they have a need to be right. So the question begs to be answered, how did Jesus do with these guys? How did Jesus deal with these four types? First, with Peter, the socializer. Remember under pressure, the socializer can become an E. Did you hear me? The socializer can switch from S to E under pressure. By the way, the socializer can be a procrastinator. Because the socializer has a different type of intelligence. And the intelligence is very what is called tangible intelligence. When they work with stuff, they do stuff. They don't need to study it to memorize it. They get it. So they know they're going to get the project done. So what do they do? They wait the last minute. And they then run around like a chicken with the head cut off. That is the wrong time to try to converse with a socializer. Because a socializer under pressure will pulverize you with their attitude and their words. So what did Jesus do with Peter? Jesus, after his resurrection, had the first conversation with Peter. He said, Peter, the devil wants to sift you like wheat. But what did Jesus say? I prayed for you. The 
socializer can be impulsive. Remember how Peter pulled out his sword? What did he do with it when he tried to arrest Jesus? You think Peter thought before he swung that sword? He went for the head, missed, got an ear. <laughs> Peter was not aiming for the ear, he was aiming for the head. Slice it right in the middle. And the God must have done this number. <laughs> Jesus had to pick up the mess. Those of you who are related to S's, married to them, related to them, you often have to clean up after them. Because they just do stuff. Because that's the thing they did at the moment. Patience with the S. One more thing about the S. When the socializer get angry, walk away. Did you hear me? I'm teaching you how to get along with difficult people. When the socializer gets angry, walk away. Do you know why? They need time to regroup. Getting in their face is the worst thing you can do. These are people with words. They know how to make you feel like that. Do not back the S against a wall. In biblical circles, we are told that the S has a very hard time forgiving. Even when they forgive, the emotions are attached to the pain. Okay, the E. How did Jesus get along with, with the executive? That was Mark. <sighs> Another E in Jesus' life was Martha. Remember Martha? Sister of Lazarus? In the kitchen working? Why did she get upset? Because her sister, Mary, who was an L, was at the feet of Jesus. And Martha comes out all upset. How come this elder sister of mine is just sitting at your feet, you know? And while I'm working the kitchen, what did Jesus say? She's chosen the part that's best. Mary, you are busy doing blah, 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 blah. She's listening to me. Who was the one at Jesus' feet bathing it with oil, wiping with her hair? Mary, that was your L. And the sister Martha was your super duper E who wanted to conquer the world. The Pharisees, most of them were E's. Jesus took them head on. Call them names in the Bible, no one should. Here's the deal. Whenever an E gets angry, you do the opposite of the S. The S, you walk away. The E, you stand up to. Do you know why? The E does not understand any language except directness. Okay? The E does not like you to beat around the bush with them. Get to the point. They'll tell you stuff and your point is, you know, sometimes you're going blah, 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 blah. They go, okay, okay, cut to the chase. Get to the point. It's the same thing in relationship. When an E in this church is in charge of a department and they come to you, we need to get this done, we need to get this done, we need to get this done. You know what you do? Stop. Hang on. Stop. Could you slow down, please? See? That's direct. Because they need to know that they cannot rule over you. As long as you play nice, roll over and play dead with the E, they will pulverize you. Jesus called Peter Satan. Jesus stood up to the Pharisees, called them white sepulchers. Remember that? He stood up to them. It doesn't mean that you have to be unkind. It means you have to be direct. How did Jesus deal with lovable John? Remember that picture in the Bible where John has his head rested on Jesus' chest? Jesus allowed him to be close. You know, He was the one who was there for Jesus. And guess the ultimate thing that Jesus did for John? When he died, what did he do with his mom? He told John to take care of his mom. Why? John was the lovable. He knew John would love his mom. And lastly, the F. Judas was a factual. Matthew, the tax collector. Here's another one. Zacchaeus was a factual. Basically, these people want to get along with people, but they are quiet, really. The secret with the F is to stay out of their way. You hear me? 
You don't hear Jesus really interacting with F's, except he met their needs and he moved on. With an F type in the church, find out what the basic need is. Meet it and move on. Don't expect them to be all chummy and warm and building relationship with you. That's not their personality, their social styles. So why do we need all four? Why would Jesus, God, created us like that? It's interesting, remember what I told you in the beginning, we are created with all four. There's no perfect S, E, L, or F. You are probably a combination of all four. You have a piece of all four in you, but under pressure, your dominant shows up. Can you tell I'm an S? <laughs> no! Don't believe me, ask Perla. I'm a socializer. I love to have fun. I love to procrastinate. That's cool too. But we learn, we learn that sometimes you have to be more like E. Sometimes you have to be more like L. And it comes out of you. And different environment will bring different things out of you. And here's the key to Christianity and this social styles. Your influence on a person that, op that is opposite of you is a good thing. Because they learn in the process. God made us that way. We need socializers in this church to help us plan. David, the king, was a socializer. Now, who else is going to get up and dance naked in the middle of the street? An E won't do that, that's not dignified. An L wouldn't do that, that's too shy. An F would do that, that's against the law. A socializer, they don't care. Life is good, let's enjoy it. We need socializers at Miami Temple to help us dream. To bring the great ideas. Okay, Peter was the one who said to Jesus, Hey Jesus, let's build a tent. Remember the model of transgregation? Let's bring a tent for all of them. That was Peter, the idea person. We need socializers in the church for ideas, great ideas, thinking ideas, creative ideas. We need executives in the church like Nehemiah to build the church, to keep it on track. When the S come up with the idea, the E takes it over and makes it work. We need L's like Esther, like Ruth. That reminds us we are in the family of God and we need to get along with each other. And of course we need F's. Solomon, the wise, was an F. He wrote all this wise stuff. Without F's, you would have a hard time keeping the money straight in this church. Don't make S your treasurer. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Not a good idea. We don't do well with money. We don't manage money well, generally speaking. Don't make E your treasurer. They'll dictate how the money should be spent. Making an L your treasurer, good luck. They don't know where they put the tithe that was collected last Sabbath. Because they were too busy socializing. F, keep things straight. So can you see where we need all four at Miami Temple? And as we learn to get along, we learn very quickly that God created us like that for his beauty, for his work, for his church. I want to conclude with two solid principles on how to handle difficult people. Before I conclude, I just want to quickly go through handling the four types. Go ahead, go through them quickly, please. Okay? Socializer. Walk away, give them time to cool off. Executive, be direct, confront if appropriate. Lovable, be sensitive, refer to basic need of belonging and affirmation. And factual, respect their space and their boundaries. The factual person have a corner that's theirs. If you live with a factual, you know that. Don't touch their stuff. Do you get me? I used to work with a factual and um, he had his desk organized. His stapler was on the right side of the desk. You know what I would do when I would mess with him? I'd sneak in his office and put the stapler on the left side and walk out. You think he noticed when he came back from work? 
don't mess with them. Let them live in the world. That's how they are. Quickly. I'm concluding. Five minutes and I'm done. You will notice that these four types get along sometimes, sometimes they don't. The S and the E learn to get along because the S denses around the E. For those of you who are um, boxing fans, the S is Muhammad Ali. Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Can't hit them because they don't stop for you to hit them. The E is Foreman, George Foreman. He hits you once, you're out. You get, you get the visual? So what happened is, between S and E's, E is punching, S is dancing. So eventually S, E gets tired and says, okay, I give up. And they have a truce. So they get along fine. The L and the F do not get along. You know why? The L feels the F is a tin person, no heart, just facts. The F thinks the L is a waste of human breath. Because all they do is love, 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 hug, 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 hug. <laughs> the socializer and the lovable, they got along because they both like people. So they hang out. The executive and the factual get along sometimes, except once in a while, the factual would get, the executive would get a factual to nerve because the E has to control. Try to tell the F what to do. The F says, get out of my face and leave me alone. The worst relationship is between the executive and the lovable. Can you see that? The executive is your Mack truck that's coming down the ramp without brakes. And the L is at the bottom of the ranks yelling, stop, stop. What happens to the L? <laughs> Until one day the L explodes and kills the E. <laughs> of course I'm being extreme, for example, but you all know that happens. We need to learn to get along. We need to realize we are different. And that's okay. Two solid principles I want to end with. Principle number one. First, I think there's a Bible verse I want to show you. Could you put that up, please? Went to that again. The basic needs of the four. Socializer, to help plan and dream big, to keep us smiling. The executive to execute the plans, to keep us focused and on track. The lovable to remind us that we are family and we must get along. The factual to make sure our budget is balanced and we are following the rules and the procedures. Next slide, please. Here's the verse, 2 Timothy 2.24. A servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but must be kind to everyone, be able to teach and be patient with difficult people. So as we come to the end of our fiscal year, we're going to install new officers. Remember, the Bible recommend for you to deal with difficult people, be kind, be able to teach, and be patient. Two principles I want to leave you with. Principle number one. Next slide, please. People don't mean to be difficult. They are doing the best they can with what they have. Does that make sense? Yeah. We are all doing the best we can with what we have. And number two, you cannot change other people. You can only change who? Myself. Yourself. Nowadays, no one would dare call me stinky. <laughs> number one, I speak the language. Number two, I wear deodorant. <laughs> if anybody ever called you stinky in the church, don't have an attitude. Just remember, we are just different. Amen. Amen. Will you stand with me as we sing our closing hymn? It's number 588, Lord of all nations. Number 588. Would you stand with me, please? Grant me grace to love.
fearfully and wonderfully made by you but sin had a way of spoiling that and sometimes it can be rather difficult today I pray Lord as we have learned that we're different that we belong to different social types help us remember that you made us like that and you have the solution to help us be less difficult help us to be patient Lord and help us to teach each other how to get along. Thank you for the Sabbath day. Thank you for this day of rest. And thank you for the blessings of it. We thank you for your presence here today. Now go with us, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 